All right, my friends, welcome to another episode of the RPG Backlog, another arc. We are digging into Final Fantasy 1. This is our zero episode where we lay bare our ignorance of the game we're about to play and talk about our experiences with the series as a whole. This arc has got me, Prof Plays Games, I'm Larry, and we have also got Travis, who's going to say you- something really cool right now. <laughs> yeah, you expect too much out of me. I do, I do. <laughs> I, I have faith in you. And then we have Tom. Hi, everybody. We haven't uh, been together for a while. How how are you two? Not all oh, at once. We'll, we'll, <laughs> go, we'll go with good. We'll go with good, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. Can you hear? Can you guys hear the sound? I hear some scratching. What's that? That's me pulling the plastic off the game. Oh, shit. You're like, I, I swear to God, I'm going to have proof that I have not touched this game yet. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I've got the you got the physical edition for Switch. Is that right? Yep, I did. Oh, man. There's stickers in here, too. That's cute. Okay. What? That's cool. Yeah. I'm excited for my children to steal those and put them. <laughs> exactly. Places that I don't them. want. But, uh, yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm a sucker for a physical edition, so I, I was excited. The timing of this worked out worked out nicely. That it was sort of impossible to come by for a while, or uh, only on digital, or you had to get it from uh, you know some other region kind of thing. So when they re-released it, I was like, oh yeah, kind of an easy easy buy. Yeah, we're all doing the pixel remasters. I think Travis, you doing that too? Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I want to do it on Steam or on the Switch because I. I bought the physical ones when they re-released it on the Switch as well, because anything on the Switch, uh, I always get it on physical media. I do not trust digital downloads mm-hmm. with Nintendo's um, history. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. Well, they also, they hold their value really well, the physical Switch carts for the most part. So that's very I mean, cool. I kind of wish I had the original NES version of Legend of Zelda, but, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> I got me a gold card. Really- Right. Yeah. I specifically remember buying that for like twelve dollars on nascent eBay back in like two thousand and two <laughs> or something like that. And then just like dumping it when I was done with it because it's like, oh, these can be had for pennies on the dollar. Who cares? And and if only if only we knew, right? <laughs> oh no, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I picked up the golden cart this year actually for the first time. I never had it and I picked it up for like forty, thirty five. So, yeah, it's not too expensive, but more than 12. But we are not here to talk about Zelda, although I wish we could. Uh, Here, Final Fantasy. So what about you two and just the series in general? What have you played? What are your experiences? I'll let Tom go go first. Fast and easy. Um, I was pretty late to the party, maybe circa, because like what, 7 came out in, was it 98 or 97? 97. Okay. So, uh, I was playing that in like 2000 or 2001. Um, and then, and then nine after it somewhere in there, actually probably before either of those, uh, like we talked about last time on, on this series, uh, final fantasy adventure for the game boy, which you can count that or not count that as actually a mana game. Um, and then that's it. All right. <laughs> Short and sweet. Yeah. How about you, Trav? Uh, well, my history starts with Final Fantasy VII, but it starts in 97. Um, yeah. Anthony, I mean, you, you've heard the story many times, but Anthony is the one that actually bought the game. And I bought it from him in high school, and I bought a PlayStation specifically so I could borrow that game from him and play it. And I actually beat his copy of the game before he did. <laughs> and that started to love, like, I pre-ordered seven i pre-ordered eight played that all the way through nine played it all the way through uh 10 gotten most of the way through that um had some history with 10 where i got to the hardest boss in the, in the game was just even the final one it was lady luna unileska unileska i can't remember her name exactly kind of a janky fight if you don't have one item makes it trivial didn't have that item threw the game away for like Six months, a year, came back. Someone was like, why didn't you beat it? Put, booted it up, 
beat her like on the first try after not touching her for like a year. I was like, okay, I beat the hardest boss of the game. I'm done. Um, and then I played Final Fantasy 14 for a bit and then Final Fantasy 16. And then you and I went back and did Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 12 and the first one of that. And if someone really wants to know what our thoughts are in Final Fantasy 12, go back and listen to that. You'll find out very quickly that our initial thoughts kind of hold true all the way to the end. Um, yeah. Not upset about that. I did pre-order that one back in the day. Just saw my friend playing it after I'd been gone for a weekend and I saw what it was. and I was like... F this. I'm not touching this game. It's not for me. Uh, so yeah. And so then we're coming back here and I'm kind of excited because Final Fantasy is literally what me, got me into what is now considered a JRPG, but to what me, I just call them RPGs. Right. So for me, my experience of Final Fantasy 7 begins in Travis's bedroom in Nightmare. <laughs> <Man's Anthony. laughs> that just sounds so wrong right out the door, man. <laughs> Watching him play Anthony's copy of Final Fantasy 7 grinding like crazy for you know whatever grinding material or whatever and it's just thinking god this game looks boring as fuck <laughs> in all fairness that wasn't actually my bedroom because the tv was in the spare bedroom okay so fine some uh, the spare bedroom you're right you're right you're right um for hours and hours watching travis play and just thinking boy this is interesting <laughs> um but i didn't get uh back to final fantasy for forever i just really didn't enjoy <laughs> what that game looked like my first Final Fantasy that I ever beat was Final Fantasy 15. Um, so that's an interesting uh, moment to jump into the series. And yeah. then I, I, I Which, liked it. So give me some context here, because I the past, I think, 10-2, I get a little bit lost. Which one is 15? 15 is the boy road trip one. You got four, the party okay. of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. car around. And, and the people were upset about it being lin- too linear or some garbage. Uh, yeah, because like the beginning, the first two thirds is open world. And it's really kind of interesting. And then it, they ran out of time and they just made the rest of it linear. And it's just, it doesn't mesh well. But it was, <laughs> I thought it was an interesting game. I played for 45 hours. So wow. I liked it. Um, it's just hilarious. So that's my first one because, you know, every other Final Fantasy game for the most part is better than that one. Um, Except for 12. Well, I, yeah, no, I think that's... Which one's 12? <laughs> Is that lightning? No, that's 13. That's 13. Yeah, so 13, 1, 2, and 3, or whatever. Um, 12 is... It's back in the world from Final Fantasy Tactics, whose name is escaping me at this moment. Travis, save me. Uh, Ivalice. It's the world yeah. of Ivalice, and you have a party. You have a, a street urchin named Vaughn, who... Um, his brother is killed. Fuck Travis. Yeah, his brother gets, yeah, his brother gets killed at the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes through. It, it, it's just, it's this typical street rat becomes powerful, helps oh, a princess. Save the world. Yeah. Okay. To save the world type thing. Yeah. It, it's a pretty trope filled story. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's a th- it was our first um, RPG backlog, so that's the first one in this whole series, and we had a lot to say about it. There were some things I thought were interesting um, in terms of story. Uh, the story was really political, and I really liked that. And I think there were some monster hunts that were super interesting, but there was a lot of stuff that was pretty grindy, which I think is you know par for the course in uh, RPGs. But please go back and listen to that podcast because we had a lot of thoughts on that. Um, but then. Came out with a- PS2. I'm sorry, yes, I'm reading exactly. a little bit here. Yeah, exactly. But 10 was on the PS2 as well, right? Yep. So yes. that, it had 10, 10, 2, 11 was the, is that the, the MMO? Oh, online, the MMO, MMO was still one? rolling. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. There was three main lines for the, for the PS2. I think like PS1 one. as well. It was 7, 8, 9 on the PS1, right? Yeah. 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 Is 10, 2 considered a main line? I mean, it's a spinoff of 10. Yeah, so it's a spinoff of 10. Uh, uh, you can't ask me to pronounce Ivalice because I played Tactics to, like, I destroyed at least two game gu- guidebooks for that because mm-hmm. of trying to figure out the classes. And in that, they call it Ivalice. Ivalice. Because, yeah, because people are stupid. Like, remember, we, we went over this with Anthony and one of the other ones where we're talking about how horrible the translations were back in those time periods where people were just putting whatever up there. And so they were mispronouncing it. It wasn't until they redid 10 that it was like, or redid, uh, 
12 that it was like, no, it was supposed to have been pronounced Ivalice the whole time because Anthony had to correct me multiple times while I was calling it Ivalis. <laughs> so the guidebook like gave like a pronunciation guide for that no, word? No, it didn't give it a pronunciation, but in the cutscenes they called it Ivalis in Final Fantasy Tactics, as I recall, oh, the, the original one. Yeah. So yeah, the localization for the U.S. misdid the pronunciation on it. Interesting. There was voice in it? Because that was PS1, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, it was PS1. There was just, in cutscenes, yeah, it was just a voiceover. Oh, okay. It wasn't like... So, like, the cutscenes in Tactics wasn't, like, a, an actual animated cutscene. It was, like, a static background with them panning and showing the characters kind oh, of... Sure. Uh. Like, a 2D sprite move. Well, not even a sprite, but a 2D, like, piece of artwork of them moving across, and you would hear them, like, a, a narrator talking over what was going on. Interesting. I remember watching you play that, too. You and Anthony both, I think. Oh, um, I've- that. Out of every Final Fantasy game, the only reason why Seven takes number one is because it, for me, is because it's near and dear to my heart. It got me went into all of this. Yeah, but I will tooth and nail. I'll fight anyone and say Tactics is the best Final Fantasy game I've ever played. Yeah, and that came out in '97 too, which is insane to think about. <laughs> was it 90, I thought it was '98 for that one. It says Japan. Oh, you think that oh, because US, it came out '98. January 98 for the North America release. Yeah. Okay, that explains it. Because I was like, 97? Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think it, there's just so much to the series. I love the way that it reinvents itself every time. Kind of like Zelda does, right? Where it's, you know, not continuous and new stuff going on. Um, so after 15, I don't think I really got back until Final Fantasy VII Remake. I played seven. Actually, no, beginning of COVID, I no. played seven, the original, all the way through until you get to the open world. And then I got lost. <laughs> I didn't know where to go. Um, so I stopped Mount, before Mount Corel. Um, but then I played Remake and fuck, I just fell in love with it. And then moved into Rebirth and Final Fantasy 16 last year um, as well. And then played a bunch of six. And that's kind of what I've played. So I'm excited to go back to one because it's kind of where this stuff started. And it's it's interesting because the creator, uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi, was really trying to bring in stuff that he liked from Western RPGs uh, and all specifically Wizardry, which just got a remake this year. I don't know if you, you all saw the remake of Wizardry this year. Um, but it's a they, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a it's an RPG. It's like a first. I think it's like a first person dungeon crawler, hard as fuck. Uh, but it got remade by Digital Eclipse, if I'm not mistaken. So it had like, um, you know, the documentary stuff that they normally do. Um, that was but, a sick logo. Yeah, it's really cool. But Sakaguchi was trying to bring in elements of Western stuff. So like stuff from D and D. Something that I'm reading here is talking about how bringing in like elemental resistances and weaknesses and things like that, which hadn't been seen before in JRPGs, at least. So bringing some influences from the West into their uh, games. <sighs> I, th- I think the, I don't know if Travis, maybe you know, or maybe Tom, you know, the, I don't know if it's apocryphal or not, but why it was called Final Fantasy, because it was like the last chance for Square or the last chance for this developer or whatever. Have you heard those stories? Yes. And didn't Anthony disabuse us of that notion at he did. some point? Yeah. 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 So, it's such a cute story though and i think that's why it refuses to die <laughs> exactly it just makes so much sense it's a final fantasy is our final chance to make a game or i'll quit um looks like it was released in 1987 um eventually it came to the u.s uh looks like in 1990 it was uh translated by nintendo of america so they um, put it out in 1990 didn't come to europe until 2003 <laughs> For the first time, which is crazy. Um, but I mean, yes and no, considering that like some of the right at a certain point in the series, the ones that came to North America, they started renumbering them, right? So oh, there yeah, were, eventually, yeah. There were whole ones that got skipped over. And then, I mean, are the pixel remasters maybe some of the first time those have, were localized for, for English audiences? I don't know. No, I don't think so. The, no, all no, the ones no. eventually got put over. Um, they had different numbers, then they got realigned eventually. And then this is just the remastering of those. They, yeah. came, I mean, they came like, I want to say that there was like Game Boy Advance was when some of those made it yeah, over here that's for right. the first time, right? That's, so. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and I think the for the European region, GBA is the first time this one came to them. It was yeah, through the GBA. 
Um, then, oddly, and I don't know if we'll ever get to this, Travis. I don't know if you've played this game, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. Did you play that? Mm, yeah. What did you think of it? I haven't played very much of it, so I'm not gonna like. I've I think I've got like an hour or two in it, mm-hmm. and I it don't remember when I played it honestly, but I have it in my freaking Steam library, as I recall. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it is in some way a prequel to Final Fantasy, um, and I'm reading here because I heard that in, in a number of podcasts. It's saying Stranger of Paradise is a dark fantasy interpretation of the setting of the original Final Fantasy game. And it's more like a Souls-like, as far as I know. Um, or Souls-adjacent. Oh, uh, now I'm looking um, at this. I remember this. It was... It, okay, yeah. I remember playing this for a couple hours. It's a weird... Yeah. I played a demo, and I... It, you know, it's, it's definitely a different... I don't know, 3D action sort of souls Souls-y right. sort of thing. I remember enjoying it, but it, it was... I think... But what I remember the writing was kind of dorky. <laughs> yeah, right. I it remember was, hearing it, that too. Yeah, it was just really. It was like I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of what the real thing. It was so cheesy. You had to laugh at yeah. it. Like it, like the dumbest thing you could think that they would say. Like they would literally say, "You'd be like, you sit there, go." I was joking when I thought they were going to say this. What the hell? But. It's still, the and gameplay still was dope. entertaining and fun. So, you know, I, now, now I need to go back and play more of this. Well, it's set in the same continent. So it's Cornelia is one of the three continents in Final Fantasy One, which we'll explore. And Stranger Paradise is set in the kingdom of Cornelia with the main character named Jack <laughs> intent on destroying chaos. So I wonder if chaos is part of this original game. I don't know, actually. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I have no idea. My assumption would be yes. Yeah. Well, we've got, you know, it sets up a lot of the, I don't want to say tropes or whatever, the the key pieces of Final Fantasy. You got the fucking crystals, right? You got the warriors of light. Um, Apparently, the way that we're starting in this game was new. Um, I'm looking at here in that you're able to select your uh, party. So you have, uh, what, warrior... You have a white knight, a white mage, black mage, red mage, uh, thief and a monk. Thief and a monk. Thank you. Um, so you can mix and match. You could have all four of one. You can have two oh. of two and two. You can do what you want. There's, you know, if you go online and look at guides, it's like here's like the optimal, yeah. whatever. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so mm-hmm. I had started playing this briefly just to get my feet wet in the game and probably played for like 20 minutes. And I was like, something's not working here. And I went to the internet and they're like, Oh, try this instead. I was like, okay, maybe I should set up my party differently. Um, Oh man. So like out of the, there's a wrong answer out of the gate. No, no, no. I just suck at games. (laughs) So I'm sure that anyone else who did what I did would be fine, but no, I, (laughs) to give you an idea when we were doing 12, there was uh, a wall in one of the dungeons <laughs> and literally you had to defeat the wall with a certain number of times and i don't how many attempts did it take you to get through that larry Fucking hell like 15 and <laughs> i i decimated on the first pass i so just be aware that because larry was having trouble with it nine times out of ten that means he literally was just kind of doinking around that's exactly right like I'm not I love video games. I love talking about them. I'm not the best at them. I've certainly beaten a few of uh I would say hard games. Like I feel proud that I beat Elden Ring, but I'm not very good at video games. People when we played during the pandemic, you know, some nights we had uh just like we'd all like Travis and and Anthony and a couple of other friends were just on Discord together playing our different games and Ant, or Travis would just hear me doing this. And he's like, what are you butt mashing over there? It's like, yeah, that's how I play. <laughs> that's how I play. And so. I'm surprised that that got you through Elden Ring, man, because that usually gets you killed in a Souls game. <laughs> I'm just being yeah, real with you. I, I got through it. I, got, I beat some hard shit by myself, too. Not the Elden Beast. I couldn't, as a fucking melee character, do it. But um, had had a friend come in. So anyway, now we're talking about Elden Ring. Uh, is, I, I put myself in that same category of a person who likes games, but is not uh, isn't good at them. Yeah. Um, but 
I have my moments, but uh, it's I don't know. I I even remember as a as a kid, right? Like game facts, you're like control effing your way through these massive X documents because mm-hmm. yep. you couldn't take it anymore. And I, I it's for fun, right? If you're not having fun, then there's no point. So, well, you know, sometimes it's it is about respecting your time and thinking about us diving into Final Fantasy One, which was like the original. I'm sure there's a lot of grinding that's going to be frustrating. <laughs> you know, <laughs> quality of life is not here, I assume. So I think, you know, the, with Final Fantasy Adventure, for example, the guide was helpful to help me not waste my time and be able to know where to go and what to do when I got stuck. I don't like to get stuck for too long, so I'll go to the guide. Otherwise, I won't look at the guide unless I need it. Um, so, so here's a, maybe question to segue from this do we know like what they've tweaked in the pixel remasters like obviously they they cleaned up the artwork but is is everything else left exactly as it was or have they have they tried to sort of take off some of the sharper corners on this thing Mm, that is a good question i don't think they did anything beyond just cleaning it up i don't think they well, I have an article here from Tech Radar that says uh, Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster is five big changes in oh. in these games. So let's go to number one, visual upgrades, which is obvious. Number two, maps and easier navigation. Each game in the Pixel Remaster comes with a suite of universal quality of life features, quick save option in the menu, um, and then with the map, shows up in the corner of the screen, giving you an overview of the area you're in. Um, and the user interface is uniform too and gives you a clear picture of how all of your stuff affects your stats and things. Uh, number three, remastered. That's, not, I mean, that's like a little thing, but knowing how the items affect your stats, not having that sounds miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so that's an addition here. I don't know why it's under maps and easier navigation on here, tech radar, but whatever. Number three, remastered soundtracks. You mm-hmm. have. Um, Nobuo Uematsu was the composer, and then it has updated renditions of his uh, scores for the games. Um, here at last, list number four as Final Fantasy three. It says, the third installment in the series represents a huge feature in itself. Why? Because the original NES version of Final Fantasy three never made it to the West. The West. Ah. Indeed, the Pixel Remaster Collection is the first time we've had that version officially released for Western audiences. So, Tom, you were close earlier that there was something new. Um, It was released before as a 3D remake on the DS, but that's its own thing. The Pixel Remaster uses the NES original as a base. So this may be the first time people have played this version of that of Final Fantasy (laughs) three. And then the last one, number five, some fun extras. There's art, concept art history of the games um and a bestiary breakdown of stats weaknesses uh, items you can get for defeating them so information about the game so that's mainly what it says is is new for the pixel remasters so i have a list of someone who is like i played the original nes games and here's the things i noticed oh cool besides the graphics and sound are obviously different there's cutscenes in the game which obviously didn't exist before sure. new local localization doesn't really affect us well the uh, writing could be better <laughs> so hopefully maybe yeah. um you can forget spells okay uh you can save anywhere on the map and quick save nearly anywhere great thank you God. can use a keyboard to type your name instead of a cursor that doesn't work for you tom because you're on a switch um i don't know this then there's a couple of things that don't mean anything to us but i'm sure they will as we play the game or games it's like silver swords missing missing from elfland probably indicating other shops are changed the invisible man is missing equipping is easier with an optimal button so hey uh you can switch stats equipment with shoulder buttons since the nes didn't have that there's sure. some other thing b select is now b trigger no idea what that means you can defend in battle. I guess you couldn't defend before. Uh, enemies drop loot. That's kind of scary. Uh, you can move diagonally. You can run on the world map. And then it says there are galleries in the main menu. I mean, that sounds like they, they went in and they tinkered a little bit. <laughs> oh, one more thing. You can buy more than one of anything at a time. 
So oh. I guess before, if we oh, went to go okay. buy potions, you could only buy one at a time. And now they're like, you can like, I, this is person's comment is I just bought four gloves at the armor shop. I feel immortal. So, <laughs> well, we and, got experience with Final Fantasy Adventure, right? We had to buy one yes. thing over and over again. Uh, yes. Oh. And the inventory was horrible, horrible in that game. But so it sounds like they did a little thing. Yeah, there's other stuff in here, but yeah. It seems more like patches and getting rid of bugs and stuff like that. Oh, they raised the level cap. It was 50 in the, the original NES version, but now it's 99 in the revisions. So, okay. Like, like any good self respecting RPG should have. Yeah. Not maxing at all nines. What are you doing? Yeah. Attack <laughs> stats, defensive stats are calculated differently, but again, that doesn't really affect us I, I mean I, I'm sure it's cool but you know since we didn't play the originals it's not going to have a noticeable change in our experience yeah At least I don't think so yeah interesting it sounds like there, this is the way to play with some of these upgrades um, I'm particularly excited about the map upgrade because I get fucking lost <laughs> all the time so I, I'm happy to have that the uh, walkthrough I have here is broken up into 17 sections. I'm uh, going to read them for posterity so we can come back and look at this. But uh, Cornelia is the first one. And then we move to Garland and the Chaos Shrine. So there is chaos here. Okay. Uh, then we move to Witch Matoya. And then we go on to Sailing Mini Games and Elfheim. So apparently, mini games were a thing in Final Fantasy from the beginning. Uh, next is Marsh Cave and the Crown, and I swear to God, Marsh Cave was an, a location in Final Fantasy Adventure. <laughs> was. No, it was. Jesus. Uh, next is Crystal Eye. Following that is Mount Durgar and Melmond. Then Cavern of the Earth. Next is the Terra Cavern and the Lich, which also sounds familiar. Um, next is the Ice Cavern and how to get the airship. So there's some more. Jeez. Um, things setting up that we see later in final fantasy games next is citadel of trials following that is getting the bottled fairy and oxale for breathing underwater which maybe isn't a huge section but we'll see next sunken shrine and the kraken wasn't there also a kraken in final yes, fantasy adventure <laughs> yeah Wait, and am i reading the wrong fucking page <laughs> And nope. I think there's a sunken shine. In a lot. So a lot of these things are something that repeat in a lot of Final Fantasies, right? Like the sage is yep. kind of a common thing. Marshlands or a cave. I mean, it's it's pretty. I don't think it's just Final Fantasy in general, but marsh is kind of just a normal fantasy trope. Yeah, sure. Right. I don't know. You know folks who have played, you know, one through six, some stuff in there. It kind of sounds like and coming in at seven i don't have a good perspective of this but like it seems like these games were very much like okay what if D D was a video game and they sort of ran with that exactly and yeah, right. kind of came yes. with it and it wasn't until seven that they decided to you know throw all of that out the window and then it's like okay now it's this crazy like steampunk environmentalist like morality tale that takes place in some crazy future place that you know all of a sudden there's cars i guess there's always been airships but um like the technology was much more evident in the ones that that followed after that um it seems like the these i, I don't know does anything one through six did they have more high-tech sci-fi kind of stuff or is that what made seven distinctive and what I mean, made seven distinctive was the break away from preset classes so Okay. From what I recall, all the other ones, like literally, it's like a black mage is a black mage. They can't be anything else. A white mage is just a white mage, et cetera, et cetera. A warrior is a warrior. Whereas in seven was the first time where the characters didn't have predetermined classes. You could dictate what they were based upon the material and the equipment you put on them. Yeah. Uh, the steampunky thing, uh, like when I'm pretty sure when we get to this, the airships are going to be very, very similar to what we've seen in seven. Okay. They, they kind of kept building off of that. So I don't think it's going to be so much more D and D fantasy without technology. Technology will still be involved in it from okay. my best understanding, but it's, it is going to be very set. All six of these are going to be very set of this is your class. 
your SOL. If you if you want another class, get another character. Like that's literally what it's gonna be. I don't mind that. Tell me what to do with this guy. Like I, yeah, I, mean, right. you know? I, I will admit that was it uh nine kind of irritated me at first since seven and eight there wasn't really predefined classes with your characters and then nine was like literally this character your main character he's a thief tough crap he's not anything else that that did bother me a little bit at first but i got over it pretty quickly so yeah i think that you know, I think Anthony mentioned it before, but like as you move through like one, two, and three, you start seeing things added to the game or the series that become staples. Like um, we have, what did he say? Classes or jobs? You add jobs into like each each uh, installment seemed to add something major moving forward. Um, the only one of the six of so the first six that I put a lot of time into was actually number six. I put about 15 hours into it um, and felt like the main thing that stood out to me was just the story, the complexity of the story. I don't think we're going to get that with Final Fantasy one, but I would love to be surprised. <laughs> that was the Super NES one, right? Uh, six. Yes. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I'm not sure which ones landed on which system. And, uh, you know, obviously right. one was NES six of them a bunch of them at least a couple were probably on super yes uh yeah maybe see. start with four final fantasy when was nes so yeah final fantasy 4 was on the super nintendo yeah final fantasy 3 was on the nes so yeah one two and three were on the super nintendo and they or were the, the nintendo or yeah, Nintendo three, four, five, and six were all on the Super Nintendo. Three was four, five, and six. Sorry. Okay, okay, got it. Three was right. NES. Yep, yep, got it. Now. And so then, this is going back to what we were saying before. This actually seems to be pretty common for them to do three main lines per console. Then, I mean, right? Because they got seven, eight, nine, right for the yeah. PS One. Yeah. They left them yeah, I mean, behind. Well, Sony. Yep. Uh, exclusivity deal. I mean, they were churning these things out there for a while. Damn. Yeah. Big. 87 was one. 88 is two. Take a couple years off. 90 is three. 91 was four. 92 was five. <laughs> and then they took two years for, for six. Two more years. Three years from there until they got to seven two years to eight and then 99 was eight 2000 was nine 2001 was 10 2002 was 11 gosh huh like yeah they were just pumping those things out left and right man and Anyways. you know as technology increased it sounds like there was a, a bit of a, a time gap right between six and seven the three years and now between I don't know, between 15 and 16 was, fuck, from 2015, I thought? No, that's 2016. 16, yeah. To 23. Yeah. That's a big gap. So. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, because, yeah, like, well, actually, this, but 11 was, you know, the online one, so that one's probably being made by a different team in the back end. So technically, if you want to get real... The PS2 got four mainline if you count 11. Was 11 on the PS2? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I think it was a PC game. Interesting. Yeah, I did too. My PlayStation cousin, 2, yeah. Windows, and Xbox 360. Interesting. That's uh, I came. What, what year did that come out, Travis? 2002. Okay, that makes sense. Because I remember coming back from college and seeing my cousin playing... Who, I, who had always just played Counter-Strike. I came in, he was playing an RPG. I was like, what the fuck are you playing? He's like, I'm playing Final Fantasy XI. It's great. I was like, what the hell? Okay. I actually know freaking PS2 got more than that because 12 was released on the PS2. That's right. That's right. Damn. So I got PS2 got what? Oh, well, anyways. 
We're going down a, a rabbit hole of not necessary. That's what podcasts are all about. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about random tangents? Because I've got one more. Oh, well, yeah, we're talking about it. kind of the series as a whole. Um, I had to look up. Do you guys the uh, like the art? There's there's like the you know each one of the games had its own like cover or whatever. Yeah. But when they're packaged, or sometimes you see this as a as a group. There's this very distinctive art style where they they write, you know, Final Fantasy and then the Roman numerals of whatever the game is in this sort of very, I think it's at this point, kind of iconic serif font. And then there'll be like kind of a little a little drawing that goes with it. Right. The ones that I should say are more recent, more familiar. Right. Final Fantasy seven has like meteor. Um, Final Fantasy eight has like squall and what's her face doing a little hug. Final Fantasy IX has this crystal, but the, this art style is really, really distinct. And I think it's this guy. Oh, yes. The guy who does all the covers is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yoshitaka Amano is his yep. name. Um, and I am just an absolute sucker for these. They look so <laughs> cool. <laughs> they he keeps getting called back for all of them. He's he did 16 up through 16 so far. Um I think that's I, all that he does for Final Fantasy is just those covers. Those covers uh, in it. But I think, I mean, at one point screen. he did all the concept art too. Because I remember no, yeah, yeah, the you're right. for, yeah, exactly. for Seven, and he has this very uh, kind of, I don't know if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But like to see all of the Final Fantasy Seven people who you're used to looking like these little fucking Lego dudes in the game yep. rendered as these very sort of slender kind of wispy, their clothes have little tendrils and things on them. Like to see them, it's like, Oh, that was the concept art. And then you got these little blocky guys. Uh, with that, I thought that was really, really interesting that that's something that also seems to kind of run through uh, the, the DNA of the series, even if in practice, that's often not what the characters look like. All this concept art kind of looks that way. Right. Yeah, because he was deeply involved in the art, and then now he only does those splash screen cover things. Um, but that's cool. Yeah, I that really... it has that that style running through the series. Um, yeah, they... I don't know. I'm I'm excited to go back to the beginning of this because this is something that launched, you know, obviously the whole series. But I think Final Fantasy has been a touchstone for RPGs for obviously since 1987. So. I'm excited to get to it. I think it was, was it Travis? Was it you that recommended this? Uh, I've been wanting to go back and touch these because yeah. like I said, seven, seven and tactics is a huge part of my gaming journey, right? Yeah. Like that, that those two brought me into the thing. Like seven is what led me to Xeno gears. The original one, which is another one that I absolutely freaking love. Um, so for me, Final Fantasy has just always had a special place in my heart. Um, that's why, you know, 12 was such a painful experience for me. Um, <laughs> oh, man. And it's what kept me from a couple others. That's why I didn't touch, uh, what was it, 13. Um, yeah. It's why I didn't grab 15 initially because I'm also a sucker for the, the more old school. Like if you're going to give me a party, let me control the party. That That is always going to be one of my biggest pet peeves with the new ones. It's like, oh, yeah, you have a party, but literally you don't control half of them. You just give them a generalized idea of what to do and you yeah, do everything right. else yourself, which I'm kind of like, th then why are they even there? Just get rid of them. <laughs> and that's why 16, I actually like 16 because it's like it is literally you and your wolf right and you can actually make him do things when you need him to do things but otherwise you don't there's not a party thing so i don't feel like i have just dead weight following me around uh so which is exactly what i felt like in 12 my god all that and you couldn't do much anyways in 12 um but i digress you would hate the new dragon age because you cannot control your party <laughs> for the most part you can offer to have them do um stuff through commands every once in a while like mass effect but, yeah, I, I've seen enough gameplay of the Dragon Age. Like, nope, this just <laughs> is, and I know there's a ton of drama around that game, and I really don't give a crap about that. It's literally just I see the gameplay. I'm like, this is just not not my style, man. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, but I can see why it would not be your your style uh, for sure. Well, cool. Anything else about Final Fantasy? 
or Final Fantasy 1 before we wrap up episode 0 here? No, I'm just excited to get into it and go. Hell yeah. Uh, anything from you, Tom? No, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think one of the only things we, we glossed over a little bit is uh, uh, the, the soundtracks. I think that those will be a, a lot of fun. I'm very curious to see the extent. It'll be hard to judge from one game, but like, uh, you know, from seven and to an extent nine, like a lot of that music stayed with me like well past when I was done playing the game. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, are there any uh like light motif sort of thing that you know do they they can trace their origins all the way back to the beginning um and and even if not uh the uematsu is just such a you know a, a titan of the industry in this regard that's a that's something and to have them remastered on this version that's something i'm really looking forward to as well yeah do you guys when you do a remaster like this do you do the original music or do you do the remastered it's like in a general. turtle that you can pick well, I mean, you can at least my experience is you can choose um, in the options menu. So, I actually I think that's true for six when I played six. So I think you can turn it. You know, they said it that those options. quality of life things were across all the games. So yeah, uh, I I didn't know I had a choice. I'll have to think on this a little bit. If you can, if you don't have to like commit to it for the whole game, I imagine no, I don't I'll think you do. You can switch back, back and right. forth just to just to see what yeah. what fits better. Um, <laughs> They're still pixely, so maybe the original is what I'm kind of curious about. I never yeah. put thought into that, but that's a great question. I think it depends on the quality of the sound in general, right? So even if the original pixel, like the original version still sounds good and doesn't sound, you know, uh, up. If it doesn't sound like it's too processed to make it work with current hardware, if it sounds clear then i'll i'll probably go with the original just because that's kind of how it was intended but if it's really if it just feels too fake or too too processed then i might switch to the updated version to see if that's less I, i'm trying to think of the right word of what i'm thinking about I, do you understand what i'm saying like too, too it can't be like discordant with the graphics, right? Right. Like sometimes be... whenever they remaster, whenever they redo those, the, the original sound, they you can tell that they've just been put through some sort of AI or something else to upscale it, to get it to work with the current system. And it just doesn't sound right. Mm. Yeah, it's like an auditory up or something. Yeah. Um, it just, it, it mm. just, it leaves a it, weird, it just sounds weird and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth whenever I've heard those. So I switched this off. But if they, if they did it right and it just sounds like just a clear version of the original, I'll probably leave it on the original. Not the same thing, but I, I thought that uh, Final Fantasy Adventure, Adventure sounded just like I remembered. All those all those musical themes still sort of hit me in the right way. So hopefully somebody has that that figured out and the original is at least tolerable. <laughs> well, Final Fantasy Adventure, we didn't have an option, right? It was just the original? Or there, was, there was no other music. Yeah, yeah that's well, what I thought, yeah. But there was that was the one where I even switched the the visuals to match with the original, I think, because mm -hmm. I felt like that felt better than what they the new default was. So oh, like the you wanted it to look green instead of monochrome. Yeah, like the, the monochrome just felt weird on it. So when I switched it and maybe it wasn't green one, I have to go back and look at my switch to see what the setting was. But I remember switching it around to something else to be better than what the 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 default upscaled version was it just looked wrong to me i played with red i just didn't like the other one so i, th I can definitely see one not working out for you uh whatever yeah. it was but this one we don't have to choose we just get the up we get the upgraded visuals which is going to be awesome i'm looking forward to it let's do it <laughs> yep let's do it i think we will uh let's start at least we'll say and we'll see how this goes um the guide i'm looking at is from rpg site um i'll put it in the comments or the you know the info for this episode i think we'll try to do parts one and two which is cornelia getting equipped and then garland the chaos shrine and the loot and as we're playing we can talk over discord to see if that was too little or too much or whatever but let's let's at least commit to those two and and touch base and see how it feels cool all right, folks, thanks for listening. If you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. And if you are just uh, enticed to hear us talk about Final Fantasy XII, go back to those original episodes and <laughs> talk about it. All right, Tom, Travis, thanks so much for being here. I'm looking forward to this journey. Uh, sounds good. Let's have some fun with this one. Yep. See you soon.